This one definitely has a story. Oh, good. Um, I love stories. And I'm still trying to figure out what the story is. Uh, so, Tyler Chiarelli, uh, Florida Georgia Line. I'm yeah. not sure if he, I, I don't know that he plays for them anymore, but apparently it used to be his. But the story behind it is it started out life as an uh, R9, plain old R9. Mm. And then, I'm not sure who did it, but somebody basically stripped it, the, the whole finish. Wow. Redished the top, refinished the top, reshaped the back of the neck, refinished the back of the neck, put a stinger on it. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I think, and you know, you can see how that's just beautifully aged. I mean, it's yeah. absolutely gorgeous work, whoever did it. Right. Um, I, I've been told this is actually a 58 tailpiece. And I think it is because it's ridiculously light. I took huh. it off there, and I was like, "Yeah, this is, this is probably an old tailpiece. I don't know if it's 58, but." And then pickups wise, I'm told that these are CS pickups, but they are kind of custom wound. They're definitely not potted. Hmm. You find out real quick that oh, they're not really? potted. Yeah, when you you know turn up Very some gain, it's in front and... of the amp. Yeah, but it sounds like crazy, uh, crazy open. Um, but yeah, it's it's absolutely killer guitar the neck shape on is just you got to be kidding me but like i said it's it's not a typical r9 for sure but i love how it sounds um even just for like clean voices oh yeah i should tune it I was like, that sounds odd. That sounds jazzy, know. and I'm that's a straight G2. And it sounds kind of <laughs> you know, pretty isn't it funny jazzy. How, how somebody will take a guitar like that and then put all that work into it. I mean, like they had really had a vision. Yes. And then they get rid of it, you know? Yeah, and then now I've got it. It's like, yeah. what? Okay. It's like it's like you know, it's like with Jeff Beck's '54 Oxblood. Like somebody went to such trouble yeah. to have it refinished and put different pickups and all that jazz, yeah, yeah. and then they're like, "Nah, I don't like it." Yeah, I'm not. This isn't really my thing anymore. And it became his, like his the main his thing. Yeah, yeah. the main kick, you know. And uh, I don't know. It's I. I guess we all do it. I, I would have to be honest as a guitar player. I certainly do that. Yeah. Where my ears will change, and but it it's usually in like 10 year intervals and I know I'm aging myself yeah. but that's that's when I honestly it's like okay it's time for a change I just need to do something else but yeah. I'm kind of like that kind of like that in life oh anyways, yeah you know, like god I, yeah yeah 10 years it's an eternity yeah, yeah. It's, it's a minute you know? <laughs> yeah. but yeah I, I, it's like I get it it's like this thing is absolutely yeah it's a stunning guitar it's it's really fun to play I'm not like a total Les Paul guy but but you got to have one in the arsenal and yeah. you got a great example yeah that's, that's, and just Oh yeah. It's so smooth, you know. Yeah, so it's Yeah, that's great. It's a sweet one for sure. Well it's funny how like different guitars just pull different stuff out of you. Yeah. You know? Well that's the thing. I play different when I pick up this guitar as opposed to if I were to pick up like the Duesenberg or right. that, that PRS or one of my strats. And that's what I love about guitars is yeah. sometimes I got nothing. So I pick up like, you know, I'll, I'll call it on the session my secret weapon. It's like I got nothing. So I'm yeah. gonna pick this thing up and it's gonna force me to do something different. Right. And yeah, and then you're off to the races. And this is certainly Certainly that and it, it's really really inspiring. I mean, I say I'm not a Les Paul guy until I play this Les Paul And then I'm kind of, I'm kind of a Les Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I end up being a, yeah, a you bit are of a Les Paul when guy. you're playing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.